Good grief. Why do they never go in for me? Hello everybody, I'm back! Yes, it's been a while, but I thought, time to make a video. Um, as you will know, if you've seen my, um, the VCLT video I did back in November, um, I uh, have moved into a new place. I've been getting things sorted, doing things, and things are just taking, you know, life just intrudes on on this wonderful thing called YouTube and uh, I haven't been able to make any videos but that doesn't mean I've stopped buying records now I'm still going through the backlog of stuff um, but I managed to listen to a great big wodge of records so today I'm going to be talking about this lot um, here we go so without further ado so the first one I'm going to show is a record that I've been after for a long, long time. I'm so glad I got it. I paid a bit of money for it, but not too much, as you know, because I'm a cheapskate. Um, so this album is Stephen Stills' Manassas. I've been after this for such a long time. And it is a brilliant, brilliant record. Um, great sprawling double album uh, full of some great songs I've been listening to this fair whack uh, I'm not sure what I think I'm not sure if it's an original or not but it does have the uh, lyric poster which I will show you there we go nice pictures of the band with the lyrics on the back Back in, safe and sound. Um, lovely go gatefold. On the Atlantic label, I'll show you one of them. I think, yeah, there we go. I love that label. That is one of my favorite labels. The amount of time I've spent spinning, seeing that spinning around is, is ridiculous. Um, So yeah, so chuffed to get that, absolutely chuffed. So that's the first one. Um, the rest of the records I picked up from one seller on eBay. It's a seller that I've been back to time and time again. And I think I paid about 30 quid for the whole lot, um, including postage, which I thought was a decent deal for what I got. Um, one record was, was duff. But I can, it only cost me a quid, so I thought mm, I'll just get rid of that. So, first one, first up, I bought a 12 inch. Now, this is Bowie, When the Wind Blows, which is the theme song off of the uh, Raymond Briggs film When the Wind Blows, which is the story of nuclear war and what happens to this elderly couple. The, the film is heartbreaking, it's absolutely awful. Um, but I do love. The song off it um, just an extended mix with an instrumental on the b-side but it was quite nice to pick that up uh, an artist that I kind of I think the artist himself is an absolute idiot uh, but I can't help liking some of his music and I bought this one so this is Ted Nugent um, State Shock his final album of the 70s. This gets a bit of a, not a great rep online. So I did check. Um, but it's a decent album. It's, it's just good. Fun time, easy to listen to. Hard rock. Um, with the inner sleeve. Lovely pictures of the man himself. What's the label? Epic label. I know best from Apple Records. So that was quite a nice pick up. I enjoyed that record. This is, the next one is an absolutely beautiful record. I, I, I've played this more than once. Absolutely love it. So it's Vangelis and China. 
I mean, this record could have been taken at any point during the 80s. I think it's a gorgeous record. Um, I'm not so sure about the cover art. I'm not... Yeah, I don't know about the cover art, but the record itself is fantastic. Um, so it's apparently one of the first records that took an Eastern influence. Now he'd probably be accused of cultural appropriation or something, but... Um, some glorious, glorious music on here. And I, if you see a copy of this one, Polydor label, um, I would really recommend picking that up. Um, I think there's shades of what he did on the Blade Runner soundtrack in on this. Um, lovely record. Picked up another double album. A um, bit of the old hippie in me. It's kind of a bit proggy, but a bit, a bit hard rocky. Um, but a very enjoyable listen. So this is Steve Hillage, uh, who was in Gong, I'm pretty sure. Um, live Herald, double live album. Well, it's a three sides of a live album with one sided studio stuff. And actually the live stuff sounds way better than the one sided studio stuff. Um, again, a gatefold, so there we go. Lots of info, nice pictures of the man himself. We've got, what label's this on? Oh, it's on Virgin. So we've got the red and the green Virgin labels on each side. I do like a bit of Hillage. Uh, maybe it's because of the time, I know he um, recorded with the Orb and I kind of got into him because of that. Um, lyric insert quite nice to get as well. That was a good listen. Really enjoyable listen. This one's an upgrade because I wasn't happy with the copy of um, I had, but it's um, Principle of Moments by Rob Plant. Uh, got a big log on it, which was his big hit in the early 80s. Probably the first thing I ever heard by Robert Plant before I even heard Zeppelin, I think. Um, good tracks on here, it's a decent album. Not up there with, with some of the other stuff. Yeah, it could be a bit knackered, I didn't realise that. But the record's in better connect, so I might swap the cover out. We'll have to see, see which one looks better. Um, also picked up Blood, Sweat and Tears 3. This isn't a bad record. Um, it's not on the par with some of the other stuff I've got in this batch. Um, it's enjoyable. I don't. I quite like their jazzy take on rock, but sometimes it goes a bit um, e almost easy listening. Really, it's one of these flip-out covers, so you have to take the record from the inside, which is a bit of a pain, to be honest. Um, I think it's easy for the damage to happen to the cover. Original sleeve with lots of... I want some records by this guy. Where is he? There. I want some Shelly Otis. I really do. Strawberry Letter 23 or whatever it's called is a fantastic song. On the old CBS. Volume CBS. One Eye. Is that right? No? Yeah, I think it is. Um, I'm not sure how many more, I might look out for a few more of their albums, but I'm not desperate to get any more. I think I've got three of them now, including the greatest hits, so I think that might do me for Blood, Sweat and Tears. This was a good album. I'm glad I picked this up, uh, which is Fleetwood Mac, Mirage. This is an enjoyable album. Basically, I like any old Fleetwood Mac, to be honest, from... Um, I'm, 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 I'm one of, I do admit that I like the Lindsay, Lindsay Buckingham, Stevie Nicks era better than the Peter Green era. Um, not that the Peter Green stuff isn't bad, but I just, it's, I think, I'm always hooked by vocals on a record, and I just think the vocals were just ace on this record, on basically all of their stuff from, from Fleetwood Mac and Rumours on. Um, even up to Tango in the Night and the 90s stuff. I like I like a lot of it. Um, got the original inner. 
quite nice. I think it might be a European pressing. Hmm. Ah, it's Belgian. Oh no, I don't know. Because it's got, I think it came from Europe because it's got a tax free, look, it's got a tax free sticker 2190. And I presume that's in some other currency, not pounds. All right, the next two I picked up just on a just as blind buys, I think they cost a couple of quid each, maybe 2 50 each, something like that. And I was really interested in them. Now, one's good, one's not so good. So the first one is a band called Growl. And this is early, well, when was it released? 1974, and this is Hard Rock. And this is a really good, I really enjoyed listening to this. Um, on the Discreet label, never heard of them before. Never heard that. It's got a really good take on Hound Dog. There's a good I want I just want to make love to you cover. Um no absolutely nothing about them. Got Shake Your Money Maker by um originally by Paul Butterfield or written by Paul Butterfield. Really, really like this album a lot. There we go. Uh Definitely enjoyed this one. The other one I picked up as a as a blind buy was this one. I was really intrigued by the cover, but some of it's okay. Some of it's more on the hard rock, but some of it is kind of real. Um, almost M O R. It's very synthy. I don't know. They kind of got the balance between it wrong. Um, so the band is called Tiger, the album's called Going Down Laughing, um, released in 76 on EMI, so it's got that 70s EMI label. I don't even know if they're American or British to be honest. Um, but I will give it another listen, just to make sure that what I think of it. Uh, need some repairs on the sleeves. They've, ooh, that's undone. Right, let's just put that there. Oops, there we go. Um, I think probably cover is better than the music, to be honest. But I'll give it another go. Down to the last few. Um, one artist I've never really been into big time is Eric Clapton. Uh, I know a lot of people out there absolutely love everything he did. Now, there's stuff that I do like. Obviously, I like Cream. Um, I like stuff he did with John Mayall. Um, but I've never been a massive, massive Clapton fan. Probably because maybe in the 90s, he, he just, sort of late 80s and 90s, he just totally just went off the rails and I suppose it was started in the 80s um, but I do like his song Behind the Mask so that's why I picked this up and it was dead cheap so I thought I'd pick it on up um, Behind the Mask is actually a Yellow Magic Orchestra uh, cover and it's had a really interesting evolution that song um, first off, it was um, Ryuichi Sakamoto wrote it in Japan in the, I don't know, 78, 79, or recorded it there. Um, then the bass player on that was with Cat Clapton, which is hopefully, where is he? Greg Filingani's, I don't know if I'm saying that right, Filingani's, um, then recorded a version of it. And basically changed it, changed the emphasis on, on the lyrics to make it more of a love song. Um, changed the arrangement a lot. And then Clapton basically covered the Filingani's version of it. Um, I think even Michael Jackson recorded a version of it later, but that got released sometime. So I'm not bothered about that. Um, this is, the album as a whole is a bit... 
what I consider post-Live Aid, when all the old guard suddenly started selling some records again, um, sort of from 85 to onwards. Um, some of the records I like, some of them I really don't like. This is kind of middling one, it's okay, but it's, it's great to have Behind the Mask because I really do like that track. Bad Influence isn't a bad track. It's not a bad album, but it's just not, it's not particularly exciting. Um, probably horrified. The many legions of um, Clapton fans out there, well, it's my opinion. Um, also picked up a couple of other things. So Ian Hunter, which I think is his first album. First single album anyway. I'm pretty sure that is. Um, great record. Love Ian Hunter, love Mott. Um, got one of my favourite songs by him on here, Once Bitten Twice Shy, which I think is just such a great rock and roll song. It's got a really nice inner sleeve. I really like inner sleeve for that. With a bit of a wordage on the back. Released in 75, I think. Yeah, 75 on CBS. Again, that one eye. Um, terrific album. Really great album. And just to round it all off on this comeback video from me, um, I've seen a lot, actually I've seen quite a few people pick this band up lately. They seem to be getting a bit more exposure which they really do deserve because it's a terrific band so i've got bebop deluxe um and this is drastic plastic which is uh bill nelson's band before he went solo um this one is more i think this is a was this a final album Together, it might well have been, or it's a second to last one. Uh, released in 19. Same sleeve. 79 or 80, I think. Oh, all songs written in 77, published 78, so 78. It's definitely got new wave uh, leanings on this, and it's really, I really enjoyed it on the Harvest label. That's a nice, pretty label, isn't it? Um, great stuff there. Terrific record. And to be honest, if you do see any Bebop Deluxe out there, I think this is the second album I've got of theirs, pick it up because they're well worth investigating. Um, plenty of people out there have shown them. And I think, yeah, great stuff. So there we go. My comeback video. Um, just really, really enjoyable stuff. It's just. Oh, I'm going to show one more. I'm going to show one more because um, this I got from my daughter for Christmas. Um, this was my Christmas present from her. To what happened? What in that? Because she didn't know what to get me, and I said, "Well, what do I like most?" And she said, "Oh, records." But I don't know what to get you. So what we did was we went into the record shop in Exeter, and uh, I lined up, I think three or four records. I went through the sort of eighty stuff, lined up three or four records that I would have liked. Any one of them I would have loved. Um, and the record guy said, "Right, you just go." Out, the, the shopkeeper said, they'd, "Right, you just go outside, and I'll help your daughter to." choose which one and then you won't know which one you're getting. Really lovely chap. Um, so if, you, is it Reckless Records in, in Exeter? Reckless? I can't remember now. But if you go in, come to Exeter and go there because it's a, it's a great shop. And my daughter got me this one, which I am absolutely chuffed about. The The Infected. Absolutely brilliant album. Um, I've, I've got a CD copy of this, but I've been waiting, what is it? When was this released? 80, 80, oh, 86. So I've been waiting over 30 years to get this record on vinyl. Um, I think I first fell in love with it when Matt Johnson really recorded 
a video album for this and it was shown on channel 4 and I taped it and I used to play the tape the videotape over and over again so I never bought but I never bought the record at the time which is a bit silly I suppose because I had the videotape to watch the visuals with as well um, but absolutely fantastic album um, Nana Cherry is on it as well uh, great great songs Heartland is one of my favourite songs from the 80s Infected is a great song, Sweet Bird of Truth, uh, Mercy Beat, Angel of Deception. Great record from start to finish. And I think my daughter chose this because she liked the cover art the best. And it is a terrific cover. Right, there you go. That is the first video I have recorded, well, first vinyl watch I've recorded for goodness knows how long. Uh, I am trying to get back into the swing of making videos and watching them as well. I've taken a break. I've been watching too much stuff of what's happening with Brexit and Donald Trump on YouTube and just other stuff. Um, so I intend fully to get back into making videos and to keep all you people happy. Um, thanks very much everybody for watching and I hope to see you all very, very soon. Cheers VC. Bye.